Hi everybody, this is Dino Crest from Prehistoric Facts. This is an extra episode and I am gonna actually gonna talk about a just basically do a review on this movie, Jurassic Park. Now Jurassic Park actually was released in 1983 in June of 1983 and so that's why it was that's why the month of June after uh, pretty much after 1983 was actually called Jurassic June. And so anywho to Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park actually stars Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, Richard Attenborough, Sam Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Wayne Knight, and uh, a whole pl a pretty much a pretty good kind of classy cast. And so, <clears throat> how this movie takes place. But even though this is going to be a spoiler video, so if you have not seen Jurassic Park or any of those other Jurassic Park movies. Uh, please click away uh, from this video and uh, and I'll give you a, a couple of seconds to do so. And so right now we'll actually talk about Jurassic Park. And so Jurassic Park is a movie that is actually basically about dinosaurs being cloned and put into the and actually made for these for this kind of theme park in in, in an island called Isla Nublar, and right off the right off of Costa Rica. And so when we actually look at this movie, it is it starts out as basically a scene where they actually have a dinosaur put into a into a, like a capture cage and actually being put into its new enclosure. But then something but then it all goes wrong and pretty much just actually sums up what is going to be happening in the movie. And, and then you actually uh, meet uh, Dr. Alan Grant for the first time pretty much like around say about four Five between five to ten minutes between into the film, and so you actually get to actually know who he is, and you see um, Ellie Sadler, Laura Dern's character, and and it seems like that this these two are kind of like a couple in a way, you know, a paleontological couple, and so they're digging up a raptor in Montana, and then you actually go forward into where they meet John Hammond for the first time. And John Hammond actually sneaks into their trailer and actually is opening a bottle of champagne who looks like he is celebrating and Dr. Alan Grant wasn't actually thrilled that he actually got in there but he didn't know who he was until John Hammond actually get to, gets to introduce himself and so John Hammond actually recommends uh, Dr. Ellen Grant and Ellie Sadler uh, to come along with him to this island where it's a type of theme park and he says it's not just for kids it's just for everyone and and so and then you actually meet Wayne Knight's character who who is basically working in the park but is also a spy for a different kind type of company and so he actually is pretty much hired to actually uh, get some embryos from the Jurassic from Jurassic Park and actually deliver them, deliver them over to uh, this new co to this company this rival company that is actually willing to actually take down InGen and then you actually go into the helicopter and then you actually see this see, and you get to see Jeff Goldblum's character Dr. Ian Malcolm uh, for the first time wearing a leather jacket sunglasses looking like he's a like a cool dude biker dude you know all that sorts of stuff but but this was back in 1983, and so you actually get to see is that Jeff Goldblum is a pretty young guy at that time, and so they actually get to the park for the they get to the island of Isla Nublar. They land, and then they actually go off into these jeeps, and they go into this field that actually they see a, their first dinosaur, which was a Brachiosaurus. Now this film actually does have a lot of classic dinosaurs. It has Brachiosaurus, it has Triceratops, it has Velociraptor, it has Tyrannosaurus Rex, it has Gallimimus. Uh, but there's a lot of dinosaurs that are not totally featured a lot in this film. And so the, you do see Parasaurolophus in this film, but that's pretty much the iconic scene where John Hammond says, Welcome to Jurassic Park. You know, that sort of thing. It's an iconic line, I gotta say that. And though... And then so you get into the middle of the movie and you actually see is that in the middle of the movie is where you actually start to see chaos taking place. And this is where Dr. Ian Malcolm's chaos theory actually comes into play. And so Dr. Ian Malcolm, Ellie Sadler, uh, were actually very skeptical about 
this park. And so they're the ones that are actually a little bit more critical. They actually think that this is a park that is probably not going to be very successful because these animals are probably going to go rogue at some point. And so, but Dr. Alan Grant is like in the 50 50 uh, side of things is that yes, there could be chaos, but also this could be actually a great opportunity for like not only just for everybody around the world, but also for scientists. And so he actually has studied raptors and all that sort of stuff. And then you get to see Lex and Tim in the middle of the movie. And then you actually start to see the chaos actually ensue. Is that the T-Rex break out, breaks out of its pet, breaks out of its uh, enclosure and pretty much causes a bunch of chaos. Injures Lex and Tim, injures Ian Malcolm, kills the lawyer. And, uh, and so that's where you actually have a lot of these uh, events actually taking place. And so Wayne Knight's character, uh, he takes the embryos and is will and is actually trying to get to the dock without actually being discovered that he actually took some embryos. And so he shut down the security system and then he actually gets on a jeep and tries to get to the dock, but unfortunately he doesn't make it to the dock. And so he actually meets up with a Dilophosaurus. And ultimately, the Dilophosaurus it looks like he's kind of a cute dinosaur, but then after that, you realize it is not a cute dinosaur. It's a horrifying dinosaur. And so, kills Wayne Knight's character. And then, uh, and so, this movie actually has a lot of suspense. It has a lot of uh, horror in it, but even though it's more thrilling than actually uh, horrific. And then you actually get towards the end of the movie, which is where the raptors are out of their enclosure and they're causing more chaos. And they are and they kill a few people. And so they actually are going to try it. And they are trying to chase Lex and Tim, and also Dr. Uh, Grant and Dr. Sadler, uh, possibly to kill them. And then they go into the front entrance of the visitor center where the raptors have them surrounded and then they act, and then pretty much it looks like that the raptors are going to ultimately win the day but then all of a sudden the T-Rex comes out of nowhere saves the day and lets uh, Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ellie Sadler, Lex and Tim get out of there and actually be able to escape off the island and, and then that's pretty much where you have the iconic scene is where Rexy uh, actually has that iconic pose after killing the Velociraptors where she roars uh, in the visitor center looking like she was the hero and so forth so this movie actually has a lot of things going on it is actually based off of the book of michael crichton of uh, jurassic park and so you actually have a lot of suspense in this movie a lot of suspense it makes you get, be on the edge of your seat throughout the whole time and it looks like you're in a theme park ride most of the time and it's actually a lot of fun great special effects all the dinosaurs almost look like they're real uh unlike the cgi that we have today it doesn't make like doesn't make anything look real at, at this particular point there's a few movies that do actually uh, have really good cgi but then there's no, but there's some that don't and so jurassic park actually has that type of imagery where you actually think like you are actually looking at real dinosaurs and this movie actually portrays dinosaurs as actual animals instead of monsters like in previous movies and so jurassic park is a fun fun film now, a lot of these kids that are actually seeing Jurassic World and they all of a sudden they watch the Jurassic Park trilogy, they would say, oh, Jurassic World is better than the Jurassic Park trilogy. I disagree with that because, first of all, Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic Park is a classic. It is a classic film. It is actually a brilliant film, brilliantly done, and actually is just a great, great cinematography, great special effects, great storytelling. Uh, but the negative thing about Jurassic Park is that it, it, it probably actually doesn't actually give the characters too much uh, to build them up a little bit. But even though it does actually uh, give you a little bit more character build up once you actually get through the whole movie. And so you get to know every single uh, character in this movie. And you actually have some iconic lines like, Welcome to Jurassic Park. Hold on to your butts <laughs> by Samuel L. Jackson. And so you actually have a classic lines, and also you have that uh, got some iconic scenes like Rexy breaking out of her enclosure, uh, the raptor hatch hatching out of the egg. 
and also you actually have the Gallimimus chase scene, and you actually have uh, Rexy's uh, uh, grand, it's grand ending where Rexy just roars, and you have the banner when it says when dinosaurs ruled the earth, dinosaurs ruled the earth, uh, coming right down. It looked like she was actually crowned the queen of Jurassic Park. And the end, and the ending is actually pretty much a very uh, spot, a really good uh, ending. Uh, no words. It's pretty much the score, and you actually have that momentum, like, oh, there's possibly going to be more coming up at some point, you know, which which is great, you know. And then it builds up to the next sequel. And so this movie actually has a lot of suspense, great CGI effects, and it was just one of the first, one of the few films that was actually shown CGI. Uh, animals and so that was actually pretty cool and uh, directed by Steven Spielberg Steve, one of Steven Spielberg's greatest films of all time uh, probably I would say this is probably Spielberg's uh, second best movie in my book this would actually be uh, second right behind either AT or Jaws and so those would actually be the films that I think would be in the top spot whereas uh, Jurassic Park would actually just be a tad bit down but still right up there in the top five and so this, I would give this film five out of five, and this, this is actually a very good film. I recommend anybody watching this film. It is actually a great film, and uh, I would just, and I would say if any of you have not seen Jurassic Park, go watch this film. It is actually a great film. You can find it on Blu-ray, DVD, even 4K Ultra. Uh, it is out for the 25th anniversary. So this is the 25th anniversary of Jurassic Park. And so please, 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 please watch this film. It is actually a great, great film. I watched this film when I was, in, when I was six years old, and I still am in awe of every, every time I actually watch it. All right, that's it for now. And uh, the next episode is going to be another review of the Lost World Jurassic Park that's going to be coming up in a few minutes. And so be sure to check that out, and I'll see you guys in a little bit.